You're watching CARE 11 News in high definition. This is CARE 11 News Saturday. Well, welcome to CARE 11 News Saturday. It is the 10th of March, 2012. I'm Belinda Jensen. And I'm Eric Perkins, and we thank you for joining us this at the 2012 Twin Cities Auto Show. Plus, tips on how to eat your way into a bikini this summer. That's right. We're going to talk about some really fresh new ideas and uh, some wonderful options for you. No. Are you going to do Bikini Bob? No, Bob. All right, Bikini Bob. That's right. That's it. Also, we're going to be heading to the Mall of America. That is awesome. Bobby, thank you for sharing your home video of your beautiful girlfriends with us. I love that. Okay, you know what the bottom line is? I heard a statistic the other day. Everyone thinks everyone goes on diets on January 1st. No, it's March that people go on diets because, of course, spring break is coming and the warmer seasons are ahead. And, of course, record-breaking weather this weekend as well. So Sue Moores is here, and she's got some bikini wear foods that are going to be good for your waistline and just good for your health as well. So thanks, thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm not a bikini gal, but that less layers is where I'm at. And just as you start to peel the layers, you kind of go, ooh. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe and we've I got need to retool. <laughs> really good concepts to think about. And so we're going to start out with the concept of weight. Yes. versus calories. Yes, I think this is fascinating. Research suggests that we eat the same weight of food every day. Always we think we maybe are eating the same number of calories. It's actually the weight of the food. And so the heavier your food, the better you would be for trimming calories. So it really is the weight of the, in your tummy? Yeah, because it distends the tummy and that triggers a signal to your brain to sort of satisfy appetite. So if you pick sort of these traditional dry foods, pretzels and such for dieting, they're really not heavy because what makes food heavy is the water. So these are super dry, and it takes a lot then to pull down that stomach yeah. to trigger it up. So if and you some pick of these water have foods, high calories, too, yes. like the nuts and whatnot. So these have water in them, so they have more weight yes. and more bulk. Yeah, so but nuts the are fine. Count yep. is so you just want to sort of shift it. So a great visual is here is about 120 calories worth of raisins. Okay. In this box. Here's 120 calories worth of grapes. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that. All and right. then here's 120 no, 100, calories. Here's 119. Okay. I gotta grab one of those. All and right. here's 120 calories versus of um, tomato. So as the water goes up, so too does the amount that you can eat because it sort of oh. pushes out the calories. Oh. And Make you know sense? what? And the tomatoes are so great. Yeah. And of course, you know, Bushel Boy from Owatonna. Good. Love that. Local, local. 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 Okay. So here's 400 calories worth of fettuccine Alfredo. So 400, okay. A cup of noodles and some sauce. Here's 400 calories with noodles, olive oil, and cheese. So you still get that creamy fat. And then we started to put in the watery food. So broccoli, a cup of broccoli, three quarters of a cup, I think it is, of tomato, and a half a cup of um, mushrooms. So you can see volume-wise when we eat with our eyes. Boy, you think you're going to be pretty full here. Might still be hungry here. And fat doesn't have that satisfaction to the appetite near as much as this sort of weight. Wait. Mm -hmm. So if you start to switch like it out and start thinking about the volume of food, then you get more full as you start to think about this. Boy, you'd be way more full eating this than you would be that. Not that you would <laughs> you'd eat have this. A, yeah, you'd have a tummy ache if you ate all that <laughs> Anyways, as the well. weight of food. Well, I'm a huge soup person. Yes. I come into Kowalski's and get soup, and I, I try to order soup when I'm out. And it's not only just a great starter, but it's also a good filler as well. It is, and this again is this kind of fun research. It sort of switches it up, and you go, oh, okay, something different. So soup, if you front end a meal with soup or have it as part of your meal, you can trim anywhere from 50 to 15 to 30 percent of the calories out of that meal because you'll eat less. Because soup, as you look at it, it visually seems like it's a lot. So you, automatically your brain is sort of sensing, I'm going to be full. So again, we eat with our eyes. Plus, it takes longer to eat. Plus, it just sort of the texture and the weight of it, because it's a watery food, all of those factors kind of pull out then how many calories you'll eat, and it actually sort of spills over into the balance of the day. So if you have soup as part of a meal, you probably are not going to be as hungry as the hours go on. And you just have to be careful, because obviously some soups are just uh, Good point. <laughs> fat laden, <laughs> and they're fabulous. So you yes. don't, don't get me wrong, I love all of them. but You yeah. lose the, the yeah. motion on that one. You definitely want those broth-based soups. Be careful there. Okay, so these are some prepared salads. And I'm that was 
is the point. So, uh, or the point I meant to make is that the watery-based foods are foods that will absorb water or naturally contain it. So your fruits and vegetables do, but grains when you cook them are absorbing water. Beans when you cook them are absorbing are absorbing water. Pasta when you cook it's absorbing water. So simply look at your water-based foods as ones that absorb water. Cook cereal. All of those are great for this kind so of volume-based. So we've got salad here. We've got one with um, with the chickpeas in it and yep. some beans, and then this one. What's this one? Here? Wheat berry. Ooh, that looks really good. It is really good. Oh, Some I great that. salads that you can pick up, and again, is they, they absorb the water, so they push down on the stomach. A lot of these drinks might be very familiar to you, and you might have those in your daily diet, but you were telling me some things. Let's start right here in the middle, <laughs> because if you're going to drink this as uh, just a, an addition to a meal, you might want to realize that it's a meal. It is. That's an absolutely perfect way to present it. Uh, this is 440 calories. That was 440 that calories. That big pasta salad yeah. with the broccoli was 440, and this is 440. That's interesting. And the trick with this is that a number of these, I think all of these with the exception of this one, when you look at the label, it tells you it's two servings. I don't know anybody who drinks half of that and saves it or shares it with a friend or no. half of this or saves it for another day or whatever. So just be sure you check the size and then do the math. But the interesting piece about beverages is that there are two different triggers or mechanisms in our body, thirst and hunger. When we drink, it doesn't satisfy our hunger at all. It doesn't tap on it at all. And when we eat, it doesn't affect our thirst. So if we're looking to sort of trim those calories out, drinking is not, drinking beverages is not going to do anything to satisfy our hunger. So it's a super easy way to pull out 20% of your calories right there, shave them off without switching anything other than going with something that's a little better to drink. Folks, this is 340. This yes. is a coffee drink, very popular <laughs> coffee company in town. Uh, 280 for this one and 160 for this one. This is even 120. I, I drink this. This is I like this one, and that that's 120. So you're saying flavor some water, and here's a pitcher you can buy at Kowalski's or anywhere. I know these have they have these at Target and everywhere else. And this is the way you can flavor your water, and it'll taste great. And it's zero. It's zero, and it's okay to have some of these. Just eyes wide open, and know that it's not going to affect your appetite at all. So if you're looking to pull out those calories, and then the and only there's other the whole caffeine issue too. My <laughs> my son wanted one of these the other day, and I'm said absolutely oh not. You yeah. cannot have a rock star. <laughs> for you. You're nine. <laughs> are you kidding me? Okay, so the last thing is kind of interesting. So Sue's talking about people are saying eating a lot of little meals. Well, we sort of had this message come out all the time about small, frequent meals. That that's a good thing to do. And what happens psychology-wise is that the more that food's in front of us, the more that we eat. Without exception, we're just, or the more that we choose to eat those small frequent meals, the more we will eat. So the thought about small frequent meals, if you're trying to tick back those calories, is to really just sort of watch how present food is. Because with our best intentions, just the more that's in front of us, yeah. the more we're going to eat. So stop bringing all this <laughs> and it's okay, bad but just food know. into work, right? That's well, the tough thing when you go to work and there's the like a big bowl of M&Ms of, of it. Yes, yes, yeah. it's all just right. knowing. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. We appreciate it. Bikinis, boys. Yeah. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Thongs, baby. Yeah, there we go. To review <laughs> Sue's healthy eating uh, tips, head to care11.com and click onto the Saturday show page, which is located under news, and we will be right back.